we thank the Lord for giving us this privilege so that we can come and study his word together. My name is Pastor Kigundu Ndwiga, I'm the chaplain of Kenyatta University SDA Church. I want us to start a brand new series. We'll look at the book of Ephesians. Now the book of Ephesians has been called the Queen of the Apostles. And uh, when, when you look at the book of uh, Ephesians compared to the other epistles that Paul wrote, this book was not written to address any problem whatsoever. And so it's the lofty, this book uh, captures the lofty thinking of Paul when he shares about God's ultimate purposes. And so we'll, 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 uh, the, for the next few series, we'll go through this book. And I, I just want us to read this book and share some nuggets and some insights that the Lord brings. For this book, I want for our talk today, I want us to look at the first three verses. Ephesians 1, verse 1 and 2, actually, verse 1 up to 3. And this is what the book says. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, verse 2 says, grace and peace to you from God, our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Our Father, as we delve and reflect on the book of Ephesians, we ask that you will speak to us. This book is a book that has helped and strengthened many people throughout the ages. We pray that you'll speak to us as we share the insights from this book. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want us to look at how Paul begins his book. He says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God. Now, there's something that is very powerful I want us to look at when we look at Paul. You and I know that when Paul began his ministry, he was called Saul. Saul, remember, was a persecutor. He's one of the very zealous Jewish leaders who used to persecute the church. He was called Saul. I, I guess when, when he was born, the parent, his parents called him, named him after the first king of Israel. He was called Saul, and uh, you know when we are naming our children, we want to name, name them after those people who are very worthy, those people that we want to, those people who we want to remember. But when he encountered the Lord Jesus Christ on the Damascus Road, Saul was transformed on that day. On that day, he was very zealous for the cause of God, but on that day, he was knocked down when the bright light came from heaven. And that's when the Lord says, I have chosen him to be a special instrument. He will be my apostle to the Gentiles, to the Jews and to the Gentiles. Sent of God. I, I, and so... There's something I want you to notice that uh, when he has been now chosen to be an apostle, God, so to say, has put his hand on him. And his ministry is very special. He'll be an apostle, sent of God. Now, the question I want to ask you today is that Paul was an apostle. God has also called you. God has also called me for a very special purpose. The question comes, what has God called you to become? You see, ladies and gentlemen, we need to realize that when God calls us, God calls us for a very, very special purpose. Paul was called to be an apostle. What have you been called by God to do? You see, until we answer these questions, ladies and gentlemen, we'll become copycats where we'll spend our time trying to be like other people, trying to copy other people. But ladies and gentlemen, liberation comes when we discover what God has called us 
to be. I remember in 1998, there's an older pastor. He's about, um, he's about 79 now, actually 89. Now. He called me and he told me, Kibundu, what has God called you to become? He told me the vineyard is large. The vineyard is large. And the vineyard has many aspects of work. You know, there are some people who work near the gate, the others who work in the middle of the vineyard, the others who work at the back of the vineyard. What has God called you to become? And he told me when you realize who God wants you to become, that is the day you'll enjoy your ministry. That's when you'll be a great blessing to other people. So Paul has been called to be an apostle. The question comes, what have you and I been called to become? The moment you and I realize what God has called us to become, that's when we become a great blessing in the course of the Lord. You see, many of us are confused. And many times we wonder, who am I? Until you answer that question, God cannot use you greatly in his course. I want you to notice that uh, when you read the book of John, for example, when you read the book of John, the Pharisees sent some people to John the Baptist. And they asked him, who are you? He told them, I'm not the Messiah. Then he asked him, are you that prophet? He says, no, I am that prophet. I'm not that prophet. Are you Elijah? He said, no, I'm not Elijah. Then he asked him, who are you? And he said, I am the voice of one who is crying in the wilderness. John knew what God had called him to become. In this passage, Paul knows that he has been called to be an apostle. The question comes, who are you? And the first th question I want you to answer is, who am I? What, God, what has God called you to do? What is, in, what is your assignment? I thank God. I know who I am. So who are you? My prayer is, God will give you a revelation, a very clear revelation of who you are, and what your assignment in planet Earth is to be. Because when you know who you are, you'll not try to be like any other person. You'll not feel envious about other, the gifts of other people. You'll say, Lord, I thank you because I have discovered who I am. I know who I am. So the question comes, is who are you? Paul knew that he had been called to be an apostle. So who are you? I ask you, my brother and sister, I challenge you, go and lock yourself in your closet and say, Lord, I'll not leave this place until I, I know who I am. Paul said he was an apostle. Paul said he was an apostle. John said, I am the voice of the one who is crying in the wilderness. The question comes is, who are you? Who are you? Reflect on that challenge, think about it, and like Jacob, say, Lord, I'll not leave this place until I know who I am and what my assignment on planet Earth is all about. So the question I'm asking is, who are you? Who are you? Let us pray our Father and our Lord. I'm praying for our viewer and listener. Help us to understand what you have called us to be. Help us to understand our assignment. And help, help us to move towards your purpose, O oh Lord. And may every day of our lives be spent and invested in that which you have called us to become. Help us not to become like other people. Help us not to chance on who we are supposed to be. Help us to be who you want us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you.